Do you want to improve at a quicker pace? Check out getgoodracing.com, where I'm offering the most accessible coaching sessions on the market. Now for the track guide. Turn one, it's the no chicane, so it's an easy flat initially, but what you need to do instead is to time the moment to do the downshift, because right now this is gonna be almost flat out. Um, you can't do it flat out unless you have a lot of downforce with this car, but if you're gonna run a setup, which will be more suited for Monza running less wing, you won't be able to turn this car to take this corner flat. So what you're gonna do instead is just do a small lift. But what's important here to maximize the speed is to be very precise with the apex. In high speed corners, you really want to get as close as you can to the apex. Otherwise, you're gonna cover a longer distance. And this is exactly what's happening here. So flat six gear, Turning in the moment that I see this curve, I want to meet it quite early since um, you don't need to over prepare this corner by apexing late. So apex early and carry as much speed as you can. Notice that while turning right now, I am not doing the lift yet. So it's important to go with all the speed in. And once you get closer and closer to the curve, then do the small lift. Um, it's important again to, to mention that you want to get as close as you can to this curve, but you don't want to go over it because if you're gonna put your tires on it, it will bounce the car more deep inside the corner. So your exit is gonna be more to the left side if you're gonna bump this curve. So apex at the white line, do a small, small lift, even smaller than this one. I know it's possible. And now for the next chicane, it's important to brake early and to slow down the car in time. I use as a braking point the beginning of this bridge here. As soon as I'm almost under it, I'm applying the brakes and it's a heavy braking zone. I picked to around 80 initially, but then I just drop it and drop it because you will understeer if you hold it too much. So right now a bit of hesitation on the braking, but being in third gear, you want to cut as much as you can on this left curve. So trailing, trailing, trailing. You see, this is very important to cut as much as you can so you can open up the next one because the next one is the corner that matters. And while doing so, you want to be early on throttle. Notice here on the curb, I am already back on throttle, but for me, third gear was very low RPMs. So as soon as I put the power down, I realized the RPMs are kind of low and I downshift to second while cutting the second curve as well. There are two main things that you should be aware in this corner. First of all, cutting the curve, yes. Secondly, is going on throttle and never drop the throttle to zero. What I'm doing here is a drop to let's say 20% and then going back on. Um, ideally, you want to minimize this drop. For sure, you don't want to drop it to zero. That will be a huge red flag in this corner if you drop it to zero. But if you're gonna maintain a throttle, let's say around 50% and then go back up, that's gonna be perfect. That's gonna be really, really good in this corner. And also, you must pay attention to the engine RPMs. If you can do this corner with high RPMs in third gear, meaning carrying just a bit more speed, or being just a bit earlier on throttle around here, being able to put the power down, then stay in third gear. Third gear is gonna be faster. But if you feel that the engine is bottling, you don't have enough RPMs, use second gear so you will have a good, good exit out of this corner using all this curve. And now for the next corner, I don't have an exact and precise braking point. I brake mostly on feel. I'm looking at this right curve and to me, it's, it's not exactly a breaking point, but I judge the distance from my car to this curb. And it's not gonna be completely the same every lap, but for me, it's quite consistent. You can also use this red, uh, this orange uh, wall around here, this painting, but you see there are a lot of shadows. There aren't a lot of references. I think the best reference is gonna be based on feel. But I just noticed something that I didn't notice when I was driving. You have a, a bit of grass here 
on the white line. Um, I'm not sure if this grass appeared, this green thing on the white line appeared because I cut the grass while doing laps. But if you notice that it's always the same, I don't know for sure right now, you can use this as a reference. However, for me, judging the distance in front of me, applying the brakes, and it's important in this corner to use the rear tires. So if you're gonna use mostly the fronts, that's not gonna work very well because what I'm doing here is that I'm downshifting to third and right now there's a slight moment in which the car is loose. So you want to get that extra rotation by using the rear tires and also apex as closely as you can to this wall. So braking, downshifting to third to get the extra rotation, suddenly the car rotates a lot more and then I use as a point of apexing this curve um, this very inside part. So you want to go almost touching the grass to cut this curb and notice how, how close I, am I to this um, orange paint on the wall. You want to be very close here and you will slide a bit the car, that's perfectly fine, you will carry a lot of speed. What's important here to stay in third gear just a bit more. So I found that you can uh, gain almost half a second with this car if you delay a bit the upshifts. So stay in third gear a bit more than you think and then upshift to fourth using all the track and for the next corner it's kind of the same as the previous one right now I'm looking at a 50 and closely to the 50 I'm applying the brakes I go initially with fourth gear into the corner however when I'm up, I'm uh, closing the distance a bit more I'm applying the third gear to get that extra extra rotation while cutting this curb it's important to cut this curb because this will hook the car nicely for you so you can rotate it just a little bit more and then putting the power at the curb. Again, since it's a long straight, it's important to be early on throttle in all these chicanes. In the previous one, also here, you want to be as early as you can on throttle. So in your mind, you're thinking just about the exit and you must be able to put the power down at this green thing on the curb. That's gonna be key to carry more speed while using all the track. Now, skipping to the next chicane, again, you want to delay your upshift. And for the next chicane, I'm using as a reference for braking this orange paint or the exit road. I brake at the exit road here. I brake quite hard initially, but I don't want to overslow the car. So I really want to carry as much speed as I can and it will be key to um, use these curbs in this chicane. So notice that I'm using this right curb to put my right tires on it. That's the first uh, thing of using all the track. So consciously I'm bringing the car more to the right while I'm on the braking zone, just a bit more. So it's just one degree in steering angle. And then I'm preparing to turn left while dropping the brakes. You must drop the brakes quite quickly because otherwise the car is gonna understeer. So dropping the brakes and timing it so that the brake release will be in sync with um, applying steering angle. So dropping, dropping, adding more steering angle and you want here to cut late and to cut more. Um, you can even go past this orange uh, sausage curb and black sausage curb, you can cut it a bit more. And I did for sure this chicane wasn't ideal for me I will point it out because I get pushed a bit too much on this right side it's not the end of the world since you can um, basically cut it like this and you will carry a lot of speed same here but I have a slight moment of oversteer which for sure is not ideal so right now because I'm carrying all this speed and I want to put the power down you see that hand movement in the steering wheel. So a slight moment of oversteer, you want to avoid it by cutting more initially because this is gonna be a chain reaction in the lap in this corner. So if you don't cut here enough and you get pushed way, way too much to the right side, then you won't be able to put the power down confidently and quickly enough so that you can carry all the speed throughout the corner. So 
The first core, the first left hander is gonna be key. Then you just want to hug this curve while going over it. The car is perfectly capable, and the suspension suspension will um, allow you to cut this one as well. And right now, going into the last corner, I use as a reference for breaking this green thing on the left side. In my mind, I'm breaking almost at 100. So I don't want to break at the beginning of the green, but not in the middle. It's something in the middle of the middle and the beginning, if that makes sense. Applying the brakes, going a bit of a straight line braking initially, but then you have to, to make the turn in. So the most crucial part is the initial braking. You will screw this corner a lot more if your initial braking is not uh, consistent. So you have few moments on the straight line braking in which you can really slow down the car efficiently because after that you just have to turn and trail brake and because it's a corner in which you want to carry a lot of speed, you don't have a lot of wings, the car will almost feel like a boat and it's gonna be hard to control it. Um, so that's why it's crucial that you will maximize the efficiency under straight line braking in this 20 meters or 30 meters that you you have this window like right now braking hard so picking closely to 80 and then doing it more like straight line look like I'm, I'm now almost pointing straight i'm just giving it a few degrees and the moment that you're gonna release the brakes then you're gonna ask more for the front tires by using the steering wheel so I'm downshifting to fourth and I'm aiming to apex as late as possible on this curve because if you're gonna apex early here, your exit will be ruined. And your exit, since this version of Monza, it's without the first chicane, the exit of this corner, it's a lot more important than usually. And even in the normal Grand Prix, you still have a huge straight up until turn one if you have the chicane version. So the exit here it's it's super super important you will measure how good this corner is by how early you're able to put the power down without doing corrections on throttle so going to fourth gear i'm not apexing at the beginning of the curve while seeing it i just try to go around it around it around it and almost here i put the power down so it's as late as possible and i found that third gear helps with the rotation Otherwise, fourth gear is gonna be faster in the middle part of the corner, but then it's gonna lose all the time and more uh, on the straight. So use third gear, apex late, confident on throttle, not too many corrections, and then you will just um, reap the rewards on this big, big straight. Um, that was it for today. I hope you'll have a great week one of season one of 2024. Um, I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.